Hello guys, Jermaine here and welcome to video number three. So in the last video, what we did was we wrote a markdown to HTML builder. What that did was it took a markdown file and then generated HTML from it. In this video, we're going to be writing a static blog generator based on the output of our markdown files. Let's begin. Before we jump onto the tutorial, I want to point you to the merch store. We've got some merchandise out there. Do support this channel by grabbing one today. I'd really appreciate it. So I've got over here three markdown files that we'll be using to generate the homepage for our blog. And from our last video, we can do pub run, build runner, build, which should convert these to HTML once it's finished running. And here we have our HTML files. So what we're going to do is go to our code generators and begin to write our builder, which will generate our homepage. So I'll call this builder blog homepage builder dot dot. Now what we'll do in this file is import our build package. Next, we will import the glob package, which comes pre-installed with build. And also we will import the path package, which comes installed with the build package. And we'll alias that as P. So let's start by writing our class. We'll call it blog homepage builder, which extends our builder class. And then we need to override two of its members. This part should look familiar. So up till this point, the builders we've written have mostly just taken a single file and outputting another file as a result. But in this builder, what we need to do is we essentially need to write an aggregate builder. So rather than the builder, the other builders, copy builder and markdown to HTML, taking one file, markdown file, and then translating it to a different file HTML, this builder will be taking a collection of files and producing one file as the output. First, we need to define our build extensions. And the way we'll do that is by using what's known as a synthetic input. What a synthetic input is, is essentially a file that doesn't actually exist, but rather it's used as an identifier. So there are three different types we can use. One of them is $web$ and we need to mark this as a raw string. So this is one of them and this is based on files located in the web directory. And then we got one for lib and one for test. So for this one, we will use the web directory and here we need to set our output file. So rather than setting just the extension such as .html, we need to set a file name for it as well. So index.html and then we need to wrap it as an array. Okay, so that's one part. So now this brings us to the implementation of our build. So for this build, what we need to do is to loop over our directory so in this case it'll be based on web and then in there we will look to match certain files and based on those matched files we will be able to create our output so what that looks like is something like this i'll first create a files array which will be of type string and this will essentially hold all the files we read and then secondly what we need to do is to search for assets that match a particular pattern and the way we do that is by using this method build step dot find assets which takes in a glob object so a glob allows you to specify a pattern that matches one or more files. So in this case, what we'll be looking for is file within the web directory with a .md extension. And find assets returns a stream of asset IDs. We can either listen to the stream that way, or we can use the async await approach, which is much readable. Await for, and then for each input ID or asset ID we match, we'll just call it input. And once we found this asset, we can add the inputs package name to our files array. And then after our markdown files are processed, we can define an asset ID, which represents our final output that will be produced. So we declare a new asset ID object and our asset ID takes in a package name and then a path whereby this asset will be placed. So we can grab the package name by doing build step input ID dot package and then our output will be using the path package we'll call the join function and we'll join web and the index.html and once that's done we can now write out our output to the file system by doing build step dot write a string and we'll have our output here 
And here we just do files.join use the new line character. Okay, so from this now, we need to define a function, a top level function like these two, which will invoke our builder. So we'll call this blog homepage builder. And for now, instantiate blog homepage builder. The next thing we'll do is to register our builder in our build.yaml file, which is similar to the way we've done these two. So we'll just copy this one and paste it here. And the name is blog homepage builder. And that's the same name as our builder factories. And then our build extensions would be dollar web dollar and then produce an index.html file from it. Now that we've registered our builder, we need to define a build target for it as well. So let's copy this one and then we called it blog homepage builder. So now our builder is set up for use. So we'll come back to our example usage package and then in the build YAML here, we will define a target. So we called it blog homepage builder. And for now, I'll set enabled to true. All right, so we should be able to go ahead and generate our blog homepage. So let's give that a go. Pub run, build runner, build. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, our build is complete. And right here we see an index.html file produced. So if I click on that, it gives us the package name as was added to our files array. So let us refactor this a bit more to include something better than just a package name. So what we can do here is to generate a HTML file. In our HTML file, there'll be a title, there'll be an, an ordered list of links and each link will, will point to each of these HTML files that are generated from our markdown. So what we can do is to figure out how we can grab the file name. Let's print out some information from our asset grab let's say our path segments i can grab our uri and yep yeah, let's see what that gives us so i'll save that now I'll run our build again okay looking at our output now we have our path segments as an array which here contains our file name including the extension so we can use that in fact to build our links let's create our links to the converted markdown files. Let's create a variable called file name, and this will be based on our path segments, which is a list. And we need the last item, which we can just do dot last, and we need to remove the file extension. So we'll replace all, and we'll just replace dot md with an empty string. So from that information, we can we can create a list item. This item contains an anchor which points to our file name and it's going to be a .html file and then here we'll just grab the file name and we'll make sure to close our anchor tags and close off our list elements and let's save this and give that a go and now looking at our index.html we see three list items generated with a link pointing to our html files so that's good all we're going to do next is to create some HTML to contain this, including having these in an unordered list. So let's come back to our homepage builder and right in here, going to cut this out for now, create a multi-level string. Let's produce some HTML. Print out our list items. So let's save this and give it a go. And we've got our HTML file with our generated list items. In fact, let's open this in, let's open this in Firefox. And there we have it. And if I click on post one, so direct me to post one, go back, click on post two, takes me to post two, and then post three, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's refactor our builder so that instead of using post one, post two, post three for the titles, we can grab this string from each of our markdown files as the file name. So we'll come back to our blog homepage builder and in here, 
what we'll do is read in our input and then next what we'll do is just split by new lines grab the first item then replace the pound sign space with an empty string I'm sure there are much more performant ways of doing it but for our use case here shouldn't matter too much and we'll change that to name so if I save that and run our builder again and then I go back to our browser and refresh and there we have it the actual titles of our blog posts okay still functional all right that's good so far now let us rather than generating our output right next to our source files when running we can pass in a flag called output so hyphen o or i believe you can do hyphen hyphen output but i'll just use the short format and then we'll set a folder in fact i'll call it dist so if i run this you see a dist folder generated which should contain our files so in dist we've got web and then right here we've got html files as well as our source files so that brings us on to the next question which is how to not include the source files in the final output in our output directory because essentially what we want is these HTML files and not the markdown files in, the, in our output directory and the way we can do that is by using what's known as a file deleting builder to exclude certain files we don't want to be included so the files we don't need are these markdown files as well as our pubspec lock and pubspec.yaml file we don't need those as well because as, as you can see we're seeing a red because an attempt is made to install the packages in this pubspec.yaml and because we're using relative paths it can't find our code generator package which is why that's flagging red and we're getting over 2k problems so let's define a file deleting builder to exclude our markdown files as well as these two files so we're going to come back up here and go to codegenerators.dart and what we're going to do is to define a post process builder so what a post process builder does is it would run after the main builders have been run and after the build phase is complete and then we'll call our builder cleanup unneeded files and right here we're going to instantiate a file deleting builder so this file deleting builder takes in a list of input extensions so right here we just need to define what we're looking to exclude so we'll exclude our md file our yaml files our dot lock file which is our pubspec dot lock and i think that's pretty much it and sorry i meant to call this builder options so let's save this and then we're going to come to our builder yaml file to register our builder we just defined so this won't be under the builders key but instead will be under a new key called post process builders and then we'll define our builder name which we called clean up unneeded files we'll set what our import is which is the same as the above and then we'll define a builder factory which is the function we want to be invoked and that should be it and then we're going to come back to our example usage package and then in our builder yaml file we're going to add an entry for our file deleting builder for now set enabled to true okay so that being done i'm going to delete this this folder and let's try and generate it again So the generator is finished running and when we come to our disk folder you can see that our passback yaml files are not there anymore and also the files looks much cleaner so at this point there is no way of deleting these files so i'm still gonna be researching into that and once i find a solution i'll make a video on that the last thing i'll do here is to launch our generated output in the browser and let's test it out one more time okay there we go if I click on that, it brings me here. Click on that, it brings me here. That brings me here. And now our images have loaded in. All right, so I am going to finish off here. And I hope this has been 
interesting and informative for you and that you learned something different. And also, I'd like to say a big thank you because I've looked and seen that I've gone over a thousand subscribers. So thank you to all those that are subscribed. And also, bigger thank you to those that keep coming back and commenting on my videos and liking uh, my videos and also asking questions and engaging with me on Dart and its ecosystem. So do subscribe if you haven't already and hit the thumbs up, like this video, share this video especially so other others can learn about code generation as well. Hit the bell notification icon so that you're updated when new videos are re released. Also, I've got a merch store out there on Teespring. So do show some love and grab some merch. At least if you don't want to grab any t-shirt, grab a mug. And that would help drive and support this channel. Thank you.